as long as we're talking about removing the ovaries, this is probably a good place to discuss fertility and, and what we can do in, in these different cancers to try to hang on to or preserve fertility. Is there a way to preserve it? And, what, and there are some, uh, I guess, interesting um, techniques that may allow a woman to maintain her fertility even though she's had some of these uh, different surgeries. Obviously, if you've, you've had the o your ovaries removed, the eggs, the eggs are gone. Well, for ovarian cancer, when it happens in young women, if it's an especially slow-growing cell type, there is a role for a, a fertility-preserving surgery, meaning removing the affected tube and ovary, sampling the other side, sampling, of course, all of the lymph nodes, the omental fatty layer, establishing the stage of disease. And just as uh, Marty mentioned earlier, some of these patients may not need chemotherapy. We're talking about a very select group in a very young, mm -hmm. you know, young age group um, with a very specific slow-growing cell type. Fertility preservation may be an option. Um, the majority of gynecologic malignancies where we're talking about procedures for fertility preservation has to do with disease in the cervix. Um, mm -hmm. And there are some hormonal treatments for disease of the uterus. So we can certainly explore that whenever you want to okay. talk about those disease sites. Well, because uh, I, part of what I was getting at is because I think a, a lot of people now have heard also about the possibility of freezing eggs, freezing embryos, doing other, um, uh, taking parts of the ovary and freezing that, freezing ovarian tissue. What role does that have in all of this? And do these kinds of techniques impact what is our ultimate goal is cure. I think for ovarian cancer, the techniques that you mentioned are used pretty rarely because as you can see, it's actually the organ it has, gives rise to the cancer. It's the ovary that's giving rise to the cancer. There are certainly those situations um, where it, it may be an option for a woman whose other ovary is not affected by the cancer, but you're gonna remove it anyway, to have that type of treatment where either the eggs can be removed um, or the uh, embryos can be uh, developed and frozen to be um, used in the future, either by that woman if you're able to leave her uterus in or by a surrogate. Um, but the majority of cases where we use what we called uh, assisted reproductive technology um, is really in other types of cancers. Uterine cancer and cervical cancer are both cancers where those technologies now do allow a lot of women, um, and I should note that women who get uterine cancer and cervical cancer tend to be younger and more of them are of the age where they would be thinking about uh, childbearing as being a uh, concern, whereas most women who get ovarian cancer are past that point. But for women with uterine and cervical cancer, these technologies actually have become quite common and we use them uh, very frequently uh, when the treatment that we're gonna have to give, like chemotherapy or radiation, is going to destroy those eggs and their ability to give rise to a baby in the future. So again, the lesson there is it's an individualized discussion depending on the, uh, the woman's uh, own circumstances and what her goals are and whether she's at childbearing age or has finished her having a family and so forth. I think you can say for a very select group of young patients with a slow growing or a grade one, we call it, cell type, there may be the opportunity to keep the other ovary in because its disease spread pattern doesn't tend to be quite as virulent as the higher grade disease that happens in the older age groups. So keeping the structure in to begin with would be, and if they uh, don't require chemotherapy, that's the best possible scenario. For cervix and uterine cancer, cervix cancer, really you're talking about disease at the lower portion of the uterus, the part that maintains the pregnancy. So we're now no longer talking about the egg, we're talking about preserving the structural part or some kind of function in that area to retain a pregnancy. and. From a surgical standpoint, we have been developing techniques to just remove the cervix and place a stitch to then sort of replace some of the strength that the cervix would naturally provide to retaining a pregnancy. And this is a procedure that's um, done at this institution um, by a variety of, of methods, either by sort of a larger incision or increasingly by laparoscopic and now robotic assisted laparoscopic techniques to provide the surgical resection of the cancer with the same oncologic or cancer outcome, mm -hmm. but provide to rebuild the lower part of the uterus to the upper vagina and then place the cerclage stitch to 
provide the holding mechanism for future pregnancy. So it's, you know, exciting stuff in terms of uh, the innovations that are happening for that particular uh, group of patients.